you think um, that this story, I mean, it's a complete story. That's the part that I really like. It's a yeah, well, that's story. what it is with UFOs. There's, there's, there's so many things that are so incomplete. There's not enough. This is one that's pretty it, – it, you, could, you could research this for another couple of years, really, but it's okay. pretty well – The story is pretty well complete as far as what happened with the the people. Now, there may have been a, an attempted intercept. Okay. It may have been picked up on other radars. Okay. And that, that we don't know that yet. We don't know that. Okay. And, and we probably never will because... It's One of the guys that probably by. picked it up with the radar. He's, you know, he's he, he's um, he's paranoid about talking to people. <laughs> now, what, Kevin Randall uh, it says uh, the article was taken from Scientific Ufology, written by Captain Kevin D. Randall, U.S. Air Force Reserve, USAFR. So this is in the returns to. Uh, UFOcasebook.com. Now, do you want to verify that you like UFO Casebook? Is that one we should carry with your? You're okay with UFO Casebook, or do you know who runs that? I, I don't know who runs it. Uh, UFO Casebook. They got some interesting things on it. Like I said, the Minot case, the the actual. Best documentation is on the website I told you about. Okay, so right. repeat that for Teresa right now. Go ahead and repeat that. Now, what to me is interesting, okay, so I'm doing this scanning now. Okay. So this 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 will probably be interesting, interesting to you as a historian. Okay. So we're doing it by date. Okay. So when I label it, the case file, the first thing is the date, the year, the month, the day. Right. Then the location, well, you know, what continent, country, location, what kind of case it is. We got little abbreviations for that. Mm-hmm. Witness and investigator. Okay, so I got one like this on my site. It's 19, it's, uh, October 14th, 19, or excuse me, April 14th, 1953. Okay. Okay, so it's a it's a real spectacular case, but it's hidden in Blue Book mm. because it's in with another, it's mixed in in another case. They're filing, uh, it's atrocious as far as they're filing and things are misfiled. Uh, they lost things over the years, only because mm-hmm. Heineck got a lot of this stuff do we know about some of these cases. Huh. Right. Anyways, this is a regular, rather spectacular case off of North Japan in 1953. The Korean War isn't over. Right. Uh, there was an incident similar to that, uh, to this one, about a month prior. That's why this case is in, is misfiled with this thing, with the uh, earlier case, because they, it, they uh, the intelligence people noticed that it was kind of similar. But it's uh, completely, it, to a certain extent, it's completely different. Uh, Navy plane, after its patrol is flying back to Japan, they they uh, see this UFO on their radar, and this is this is this uh, Navy plane is chopped full of electronics. So the okay. thing is is uh, is giving off electronics and everything. So they figure it's something from the Soviet Union. Okay. Uh, and it's big. And they're trying to outrun it back to Japan. And then these smaller things appear on the radar screen, up to mm-hmm. about ten of them. Wow. Now, they're they're flying along, and these, 
smaller things are making passes at them. They're not they're not shooting, but they're very aggressive. Okay. So the pilot takes the plane down to 400 feet a- above the water. Wow, wow. And they're going under him. These things are uh, going under. About 70 passes are being made during this thing. Okay. I'm going to put me on mute because of the cat. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so um, they're doing this, and... This this is like something out of the future has suddenly appeared to this Navy plane. Wow. Because this is like a AWACS plane, which is, you know, uh, uh, command and control and also uh, detecting enemies and things like that. Okay. But in 1953, it's like, 10 or 15 years in the future that this thing exists, especially with the Soviets. It's probably with the Soviets. It's probably 20 years in the future. Okay. And all these planes are making, uh, as far as safety goes, this is completely, you know, unbelievable. So this thing is in there as a UFO report. Okay. Uh, I, uh, there's no analysis or anything. It just says it's like it's similar to the first incident, which was not as spectacular as this one. Hmm. Hmm. So they make for Japan, and that's, you know, they finally get away. Okay. Uh, so, so it's an interesting commentary from you because what you're saying is, is that when there were other situations that could have been invested investigated fully they were not right and so th- th- yeah this is this is one that the government in- investigated so it was uh my friend wrote this up i mean several of us knew this i point i think i pointed it out to uh, brad sparks i think that's how he got he learned about it anyways he wrote it up as an entry for a ufo encyclopedia okay and then my friend found uh, on this uh, Korean War veteran site uh, weekly combat uh, reports uh, from the first uh, U.S. Marine Corps Air Wing. Okay. So what these guys had was they had, uh, you know, how how much if, if they uh, engaged things on the ground, what what damage they thought they caused, or if they uh, if they got into uh, fights with the uh, uh, with the communists, you know, how many planes were shot down or. If uh, how many of our planes were damaged? This is a t- typical com- uh, combat summaries for each week. Good. <laughs> they also had UFO. Okay. So uh, this is this is uh, differentiated from unidentified aircraft. It's yeah. actually UFO, so it's differentiated. Okay. So if they saw an unidentified aircraft, that was different from a UFO. So here in the – and uh, these guys, are uh, they're reporting stuff from all over Korea, not just their area uh, where the Marines were. So one of the reports is the April 14, 1953 incident. Okay. The same incident that's in the Project Blue Book case files, except yeah. it has <laughs> more or different information. Hmm. So if you put the two of them together... What's the story? The story becomes uh, a little more complicated, but it also refines some of the things in the uh, Project Blue Book case file. So it's it, it, it's a confirmation and a, 
uh, amplification. But so it's also it's it's substantiated, right? I mean, the two reports, it's it's a it's cross referencing substantiates because um, it's it's verification of replicating the results. Right. Plus they have it. Plus it amplifies the report we already had. So that is on my website. Okay. Brad Sparks rewrote his. His article is in the encyclopedia with the new information, and to me, that's 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 the kind of thing that I, I'm doing with this. Well, it's a, it's a bonus from uh, scanning this stuff. Okay. Because if I come up with a document like this Marine Corps combat thing, and I've already got the Project Blue Book thing scanned. And this one goes in, and it's the same date. They come up right together. Yes. Huh. Uh, that is the that is the scientist inside of you who um, is really good at documenting, verifying, and clarifying your results. Really interesting work. I mean, really interesting work. So, um, yeah. Um, thanks for sharing that story. That's really that's really a good story. Um, so talk to me now. I hope you kind of get a breath or another um, cough drop. Talk to me about what you think was one of the most challenging stories for you to be involved in personally, whether it was challenging for evidence or it was challenging for um, believability or it was just simply challenging because you knew it was true but you didn't know what to do in order to substantiate the evidence. Talk to me about a story that was difficult for you that you really believed but was difficult. We're at the end of the end of the uh, archiving time. So, oh. what about tomorrow night? We got two minutes. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, why, why don't we talk about uh, uh, actual history? Okay. Like uh, I followed things through the years, and people in ufology don't understand how things came about. And I've, right. I've looked at the documents to figure out how they came about. And I was fortunate enough to find a number of documents where I could uh, uh, really amplify the history of, of, of what was being done to investigate these things by the government. Good. Good. Um, you know what? I really enjoy your conversation. I mean, I, I don't want you to think I'm sitting here flattering you, but I really, really feel your conversation. I really feel your emotions and um, I share your joy with you. It is an, for me, it's an amazing conversation. It's virgin, virgin material for me, and um, I would enjoy, I would enjoy talking further with you. Are you okay with that? Yeah, sure. Oh, good. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. All right, Teresa. Yeah, we're doing tomorrow night Ace Folk Life. Uh, have we got other people scheduled, or would you like yeah, to invite I, him for? I, uh, one oh, of the yeah. hours, or yeah, he's a he's a historian as well, not just UFOs, okay. but other okay. other things. Well, okay, but, so Jan, is an hour enough time tomorrow for us to get into the next part of your story you'd like to document? Sure, sure, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Really good. All right. Uh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Okay. And, all right. Thank you very much. That's absolutely fabulous. Well, do you have really people amazing. coming? Do you have so people coming he, tomorrow at a certain time? Would he I be do, the he first can, hour or the second be, hour? No, and no, are you yeah. starting eight California time? What time well, are you starting? Uh, I I can start I can start at whatever what let's can we take this conversation off air, Teresa? And um, well, I've got it already start. up for tomorrow. Uh, so what uh, time? Jan, what time? yeah, yeah, it was eight. Eight Eastern, uh, I believe. Right. So right. eight Eastern. But if you want to come the first hour, maybe or it's yeah. eight okay. to ten is her that, time because she starts at six California. Okay, okay. so is that, yeah, what? what is, uh, you, do you have my number and everything? Can you give her my number? Okay. Yeah, I'll give it Good. to her. Okay. Thank you. It'll All be right, on this cool. station uh, in this archive for the ACO. We're we're trying to save money on all these SSL certificates on all our domains, so 
we're trying to combine databases, but right now we're just going to use this archive for oral archives for Ace Folk Life tomorrow night. Eight to ten, that's seven my yeah. time, six Suzanne's. But that will be eight o'clock your time tomorrow, and she's got two or three people we'll introduce, and uh, they'll tell their stories, and so we'll ask you first.